Living with psychic intuitive abilities has been a gift that has existed on the face of the planet since the beginning of time. Hi, my name is Nancy Rebecca. I am a registered nurse. I'm also a clairvoyant and I have been teaching psychic intuitive development for over 25 years now. I'm kind of one of those old timers and I was definitely doing it during a time when it was not popular at all. But Spirit had asked me to bring this work out of the closet that it had kind of been in the back alleys and the underground for a long time and that people still had a lot of fear around it. I was afraid too, but I could really hear that voice of spirit very strongly. And I knew that I was being called spiritually to move this, um, this work back out into kind of normalizing it in day-to-day -day life. So now over that 25 years, it has evolved. We are in an enormous time of awakening on our planet where the universal consciousness is raising the vibration and each and every one of you are having intuitive psychic abilities that are coming to the surface. And so I really wanted to normalize this, that there are just normal, regular people out there who are working with their psychic abilities. So today I am interviewing Lucia Brody. I am super excited to have you today. Uh, welcome, Lucia. And thank you so much for being willing to kind of come out of the closet in a bigger way. Thank you. <laughs> So I am going to ask you some questions. Um, I know it can be a little awkward to be kind of this public. I know you live. Uh, well, why don't you tell us where you live? Because I know it's a beautiful place. Uh, I live in Courtney on Vancouver Island. In Canada. Which, which is part of BC, which is part of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> And um, but it's really far north on Vancouver Island, isn't it? Uh, um, no, I'm never good with directions, Nancy. I know it's not north. It's it's I'm going to say it's a little north. <laughs> it's a little north. But Three what I know north of Victoria, three hours north of Victoria. But you have a lot of beautiful, gorgeous, huge trees around. You live around water. You have a lot of wildlife, incredible birds. I mean, I, I've been up there once or twice, I think. And it's the, the nature is palpable. Uh, have, so have you always lived there? Uh, no, uh, we lived in Vancouver. Um, we moved here in 1989. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So that's a place for, that I wanted to get started. So I know that you have a website, deeppeace.ca, because it's Canada. Um, and I also know that you work full time as a psychic doing readings. But so I'm going to kind of start at the beginning. Um, I'm going to ask you this similar question that I ask everyone. Were you intuitively, psychically sensitive as a child? Did you notice that you had abilities as a child or did that awareness come to you in more of your adult years? Um, I just meditated on this this morning and the words I got were clamped down. Wow. And so clamped down uh, uh, and I just sort of, uh, was always interested in the unseen and then in my 50s I would say it started coming on stronger so later in life later in life and so when you say that it started coming on stronger uh, because I always kind of think about things in terms of what your gifts and abilities might be. Was it more a feeling? Did you hear things? Did you have the gift of sight? Or did you see things or just know things? I mean, when that came on stronger, what was that like for you? Well, uh, the first thing that I was directed to do, interesting, was when I was 50, I remember that I kept being directed to look at dark, blue, um, beautiful, deep blue things. It, I was attracted to them. And then, then, uh, um, then I started to take courses 
more courses, direct courses. So um, in terms of my psychic abilities, uh, I hear and I see and I know. Whoa, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was interesting because um, I'm currently in the process of getting ready to launch my new website that I, I've been working on for a year. So I already have my the website that I have, intuitivebind.org, is already 10 years old. So definitely ancient compared to where our current kind of technology is. So I'm kind of going through an upgrade. But I was looking at pictures of when I went up to teach in Canada. And it was like one of those really old pictures of you attending one of my first classes. I, I actually remember. <laughs> I remember Nancy Rebecca being asked to go lie on the table. You and Yvonne were there. And I remember lying on the table and you guys were talking, talking, and it was about, okay, the ants or the angels or we're getting messages here. And I'm like, I want to hear too. <laughs> and just having a sense, you know, and then, yeah. So it was very exciting, very, very exciting. And can I keep talking? Yes, please do. <laughs> so with one of the questions I know is about what, prompted you to uh, explore this and for me it was like this amazing uh, thing that seeing uh, symbols and uh, colors that people's stories were in their aura and I'm yeah. like holy mackerel this stuff is is real <laughs> <laughs> and it's like just mind-blowing and it still is mind-blowing yeah yeah, it is. And as a clairvoyant, you know, I can see energy fields and realizing that, yes, their whole story is contained in the aura. And most times we can't see that. It's like kind of what you see is what you get. You, If I'm talking to you, you're only going to share with me what you want to share or what I might ask about. But when you have those extra abilities, um, then you can see so much more. Uh, the relationships are so much richer and so much deeper. But you were curious, and this is what I think is so great, that you came to your abilities more, you kind of felt called when you were in your 50s. Uh, but you've really taken your development. I mean, you were determined. You are probably one of the most determined people that I have ever met that not only what I know about you is that you wanted to develop your ability, but you also really wanted to sincerely be in your integrity with it. Um, and that you, you wanted to read a lot of people's energy fields so that you could really hone your skill. So talk to me a little bit about what that was like when you, you knew you were intuitive, you knew you needed to develop it. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is through readings. Um, what was that like for you to start in doing intuitive readings for other people? Well, that is a terrific question <laughs> <laughs> because, because I'm 70 years old and almost 71. It was like, um, first of all, starting to read terrifying, absolutely terrifying. I couldn't sleep all night because if I was going to do a reading, holy macaroni so uh, if i don't get this across i'm going to say it again i was terrified and so i've had to work through that and because of my age i feel like i don't have a choice now no dilly dallying around if you want to do this lucia and you want to do a good job let's get going on it right because wow. perspective changes <laughs> Yes, your perspective certainly changes with each person that you're doing a reading. But this is the other thing that I know about you, because when I'm working with my students, um, you know, when people come for a reading, they can be quite um, invalidating. They can be quite skeptical. Um, there is a, a thing that I always talk about that it's um, like an amnesia that you can say something to someone and they're like, nope, nope, I can't relate to that. <clears throat> Makes no sense. And then they come back two ladies later and they're like, oh my gosh, 
I know the incident you were talking about. I'd totally forgotten about it. But when you're doing an intuitive psychic reading, you've got to develop a pretty thick skin um, because you you have to validate what spirit is sharing with you because the person you're reading may not be connecting with it. And you just kept going. Do you want to speak a little bit more about that? I would love to, because this is one of the favorite subjects in my entire life. So one thing that happened uh, around thick skins was uh, being in psychic fairs. Um, oh, that's where, right. I forgot you did that. Yeah. So, brave soul. <laughs> I know. Well, my brave friend, Kat Dextrace, dragged me. Um, and so I remember thinking, I can't. I can't do past life readings, no way. And then person after person after person came and that so the practice, practice, practice um, until eventually it's that voice in the background. It's not gone away, thank you, it hasn't gone away. It's further away, the one saying, this doesn't make sense, this isn't right, the voice of doubt. So um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, Lucia, after 25 years, I think it really surprises people when I say I still have insecurities, I still will second guess myself. But it is true where the that voice sounded like a foghorn in the beginning, right next to your ear. And you had to just keep I had to keep overriding it. But over time, it's just this tiny little voice where it's just like, just go away, you know. <laughs> to keep going, keep going. Yeah. So what is the, the biggest thing that you've learned about yourself, uh, getting over yourself? Uh, how do you keep going when that voice of doubt is so loud? So as an example of that, there's two questions there. I'll, I'll go with the second one right now. Um, uh, before, before a reading, getting all like nervous jitters whatever once the reading is finished and then there's this glorious feeling yeah you know, that it's not just about you yeah. <laughs> it's about being a, a, a channel and and uh, and so what have uh, have I learned is that was that the other question what well, is, about, about yourself, about getting over yourself. And I think you just said that, that, okay. that you really began to realize more and more. It wasn't about you. It was about that soul to soul connection that you were making with another person. And, and that, yes, and that we're learning together. Um, we're learning together. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, there's a lot, there's a lot there. So I might, I might come back to that. So you did mention, I said, have you always been public? So you've talked about coming to this later in life and, um, uh, or do you tend to keep them private? So that was one of my questions. Uh, but you, I mean, that's really going public. And I think a lot of what a lot of people, if you go to a lot of psychic fairs, you don't realize, I mean, it's a big deal. If you're, you, you're following a calling, from your soul, spirits calling you to be out in the public, to maybe even make a connection with somebody who really needs that connection today, and they need that connection with you, but it doesn't mean that you're comfortable doing it. Um, do you have a story, I didn't kind of pre-plan this, but a story of where you really touched someone that needed to see you that day uh, that met you at one of the psychic fairs? I would like to say I had a story. Um, I would just say that <laughs> um, when people come to see you, uh, uh, nine times out of 10, they know you have something uh, that they need to hear and that their spirit is, is get, getting them over to you. Um, and so um, uh, doing these readings, validation you, you you think oh shit this isn't this isn't what am I doing what am I saying and then they'll say oh my goodness this is exactly what I needed to hear oh beautiful 
yeah. So yeah, that's, that, it was great. It is great. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So what do you consider your psychic gift? So you have said hearing, seeing, and knowing, but in what ways do you work with your abilities that might surprise people? Right. So um, I wrestled with this question um, and I would say that that meditation and intuition, intuition and meditation. I meditate because I'm working on my intuition muscle. Mm -hmm. um, that it's so a part of my life. It's everything. Um, you know, before this interview, I I I did lots of uh, meditation and work to clear the energy um, before every day. It helps clear what's in the way. Um, uh, when I'm sitting in a dentist office, uh, using the tools of grounding and clearing, um, having uh, yucky feelings about people, mm -hmm. uh, going into meditation about that, it's so helpful. When we go down, when I go down rabbit holes, it is a compass for me. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm at yeah. a loss for words. Yeah. <laughs> it, so what, it's so what, meaningful. It's so meaningful. So what do you mean by, for people who may not know, because I know that that's a, a language that we use a lot going down that rabbit hole, or I'll call it, uh-oh, I'm starting to go down the slippery slope meaning, you know, I'm losing my spiritual perspective. So is, so could you explain a little bit more what you mean by going down the rabbit hole? Yes. Um, why am I doing this? Feeling despair about my purpose, mm. uh, especially uh, later in life when you think, oh, why don't I just go sit in the sun and, and drink a latte? Why am I bothering to do this? Um, so I've gone down rabbit holes of despair, uh, discouragement. Um, I still go down them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so these tools and this work, and as you have said, spiritual perspective, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> if, if we didn't have spirit, if I didn't have right. a spiritual perspective, why would I be here? Right, right. And I've really been, you know, this, you know, I'm doing this interview. It is the year 2021. And this year is all about globally for all of us on the planet um, that we have, uh, uh, th there's some bitterness about, you know, trusting an external authority and having maybe those external authorities being corrupt or not having our best interest at heart, or maybe kind of guiding us the wrong way, or we, we kind of gave up our power to someone else in a relationship. And this year is all about beginning to, we're kind of, that ship is turning, that, um, that awakening ship is turning where we are awakening to, we are our best inner authority. And right now, this spiritual perspective, it truly is that, I love that word that you use, that compass uh, that keeps you heading in the right direction when, um, yeah, when you get discouraged. And there, we have a lot of reasons to get discouraged in the world right now. And to have that spiritual perspective to say, you know, get back up, put the boots back on, walk out that door, get the, get out, get out of the bed, take the blanket off your head, you know, and even if you're almost 71 years old, you, the, the spirit world, basically, it sees you as spirit, it doesn't see you as 71. And it knows that you have a tremendous amount to contribute to the world and that you are here to do that. And that uh, your spirit woke you up for a reason. You're woke and you can't go back to sleep once you're woke, you know? And so, um, uh, yeah, I, I can, I'm going to step off my little soapbox uh, for right now. So 
you said, because my next question is, can you turn your gifts off and on? Do you find reasons to do that? You said it's so much a part of your life, but um, does it get to be too much being sensitive sometimes? Um, I would say turning gifts off and on. Um, I feel like when I go into a trance for the, for the readings and meditation, um, that that's when I hear, see, know, uh, when I'm focused on that, when I'm focused and the rest of the time I'm just walking around and I'm trying to mind my own business and I'm trying to be grounded and present and compassionate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, that's what I'm gonna say to that question. Anything else? Uh, I, I will say I, I don't see people's auras. Uh, I, I just, um, um, I, do, I do feel for people, definitely I feel for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, and that part's, that part's, it, it's tough. Um, it, the other day I was walking and um, saw a homeless person and it was just like, they were laying in, in, the, in my back alley and it was like, oh, I want to make a cup of coffee or I want to make them breakfast or I, and it was just like, it just hung, hung on to me all day. And I just had to tap in and he did end up, he was sitting up and he looked really healthy and doing well. And he got up and had walked away, but, but that image stayed, that compassionate image stayed with me. And then my spirit reminded me, prayer is powerful, Nancy, you know, say prayer that, that the, you know, the compassionate light of the divine, you know, is able to uplift him in ways that he can uh, move in his life in a way that's going to be uplifting to him. And so spirit was reminding me of just how valuable that is. Um, even if it's not a cup of coffee and breakfast and come on into my house and have a hot shower. <laughs> um, but I think like this all the time. It's yeah. When you feel that suffering in the world, the other thing that I want to mention here, cause you mentioned that you're 71 and I don't want to forget to say this, that I'm 62, but I have been doing this work since I was in gosh, you know, in my late thirties. And what I'm finding is that there are a lot of, I'm going to say senior uh, men and women who are coming to their abilities later in life. And they, they have a tremendous amount to contribute and they are intuitively and psychically developing. And it, that wisdom that you bring with you in the world is incredible. Uh, as an elder and our young people, because I work with a lot of people in their 20s and 30s as well. And they're like, we're not ready for our seniors, our elders to go away yet. Uh, we have a lot of ability, but we still need the, our elders wisdom. So I, I just think it's wonderful that, that yes, you, you just keep going. So um, now my question is what inspired you? And so you've kind of talked a little bit about that, but I know that you have come with me to South Africa. So, and you learned a lot about the ancestors in South Africa. And I've also traveled with you to Ireland as well. And um, you've really started doing a lot deeper work ancestrally. So can you just tell me a little bit about your experience that you had that also really took your work to another level? Yes, I would love to. So um, I remember in our, one of the highlights of the trip to Ireland, mm -hmm. um, all of Ireland was amazing. <laughs> um, I, I went for this walk and I forget the name of the park. It's really well known. And I was walking along and I got this overwhelming message from the ancestors of Lucia, will you stop beating yourself up? You, you're fine the way you are. You're mm -hmm. just fine. Just stop with all the angst in your life. And it was so, so clear. And uh, anyway, and then I went back to my room and I just sat down. I didn't know what was going to happen. And I just sat down and I got this 
unbelievable feeling of the weight of all the ancestors there. And I remember thinking, holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they're saying, you see, we really are here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was that was really wonderful. And that's never left you. I've never forgotten it. I never will because it was such a huge affirmation. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that a lot of people may not know about Ireland is, I mean, it's very tribal. So we talk about in, in the, you know, like the Vikings, very tribal in nature, uh, very ancestral oriented, you know, very family oriented. Um, very Celtic, very nature, you know, they have some of the most ancient megalithic stones there, you know, it's just, yeah, you are going to be touched in a really deep way. And, and the land there is an ancestor, you know, that really speaks uh, quite loudly. So, um, and they're always saying, you know, they believe as spirit that, you know, the spiritual realm and the ancestors, they believe we are the most beautiful beings on in the universe. And they know that for you just to have a human body, you already are a very ascended soul, that it takes a lot of strength to be given the gift of a body. And a lot of us don't know that. We, we think that we're worms or that, you know, that we're here on earth because it's a punishment. It's actually the opposite. So I think that's a beautiful message that the ancestors brought through for you. So what is the biggest misconception you had about psychics? Uh, maybe whether it was learned or that you just kind of had or that others have about psychics that you would like to clear up a little bit? Well, I just can't wait to answer this question. <laughs> uh, so I would say the biggest misconception that I had was when right, I remember right at the beginning when I took that workshop with you and you we were talking about pictures and symbols and anyway, I remember thinking it was like getting uh, the golden ticket in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You are psychic. The world is going to come visit you. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Um, but it's not like that. Um, <laughs> you need to work on it. It's huge. Practice, learn, practice, learn, practice, learn. And then the make it. Ming is the biggest misconception, I would say, and I've heard everybody else say this, and it's so true, I think, is that um, if you're psychic, people come to you and you're going to tell them the future. And it's not about the future. It's no. about the present and what you're doing with it. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And I remember, you know, for me, I, I can do readings and sometimes it's slow moving, like through mud. I mean, you make that soul to soul connection with that other person, but sometimes that connection is very slow for a variety of reasons. And sometimes it comes through very quickly. So it's not the same in every single uh, reading. And uh, because I teach intuitive psychic development, I know, I feel like I can bring anybody into my classroom uh, to study with me for a year and, you know, really get them to a different place. But the whole year that you are learning your own psychic intuitive development, you are learning how to get over yourself. That uh, you, you already have the ability, but your doubt, your insecurity, your internal criticism, your judgment, your like your invalidation. It's like, oh, that discouragement. That's the crap you have to deal with because your spirit's highly intuitive, but it's got to get you kind of out of the way. And I think that's what we end up learning, isn't it? Oh boy, big time. Put that all in big lights. That is <laughs> so, so true. And I I have to add here that I remember sitting opposite you at a luncheon that you had at your house before I decided to do the psychic mastery. And I remember thinking, oh man, I have to take that. I have to, I have to get, I have to get, as you said, have integrity. And that's what we learn, integrity. Yes, because there are many people that don't trust themselves and they honestly, they can get very addicted to psychics and, and we have kind of a policy of, 
you know, we're not going to do a reading for you every other day or every week, you know, that that's part of the integrity piece that you do have your own answers. But there are a lot of people for a variety of reasons um, don't trust themselves. And so that's why anybody going through my program, I really want you to have high integrity and not take advantage. Not that any of you would take advantage, but to uh, kind of honor uh, those gifts and that relationship, that soul relationship with another person. Um, so that if you don't know the answer, don't make it up, you know, and that you want to help them to heal if they don't know what they need to do, well, let's take a look and see what's blocking you from trusting yourself. And that's that perspective that we work from. All right. I, I know that you do a lot of readings for people who come your way. Um, and so I know that the name of your website, it's, it's Deep Peace, right? D-E-E-P, P, two P's, uh, Deep Peace peace, P-E-A-C-E dot C-A is your website. And how do they contact you for a reading? So they would go on a website and it will direct you to how to uh, contact me. And I am not full-time, I am part-time. Okay. I should okay. say that. Okay. And then do yeah. you do your readings um, on Zoom? I do readings on Zoom. I do readings long distance that are recorded and sent to somebody. And I have just started, restarted doing readings in person. In person again. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Is there anything that we didn't cover uh, that you would, any kind of final message that you would like people uh, to walk away with today? Oh, just do it. <laughs> just do it. It's, it is a lot of fun, isn't it? Once you get over yourself, it is a lot of fun. And it's very rewarding, very Just, meaningful. Yeah, extremely meaningful, extremely meaningful. Just do it. Just do it. I love okay. it. Eleanor Re Roosevelt. Okay. Eleanor Re Roosevelt. Do the thing you think you cannot do. I love it. Do those first the things you think you cannot do. That's so right. the other thing is you do have Facebook under Lucia Brody. You do, um, you do videos, Facebook live. Yes. And I have a business deep piece 70 on Facebook and I've got, so got a YouTube. Huh? Oh, do you really? Oh my God. I love, I love it. I love it. I hope all the 71 year olds out there are inspired and all the 20 year olds are inspired. I think you are incredibly awesome, Lucia. And you are just delightful um, every time I get to be around you. So I love the longevity of our relationship that we've had. Um, I know you've watched me grow a lot as much as I've watched you grow a lot. And it's it's wonderful to be in the river of life with you. Well, back at you tenfold. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks so much. Let me just uh, get this recording stopped. And again, thank you for being willing to come on this interview. You're welcome.